Okay, this is a, a good application of combination theory. Uh, there actually are some other methods of solving this as well that we'll look at, but I want to show you the combination method for sure. Uh, it's talking about the diagonals of a polygon, and a diagonal of a polygon is just a segment that connects two vertices and is not a side. Um, so you, you can include sides when you're talking about polygons, but any other two uh, vertices that are connected is called a diagonal of the polygon. Okay, one fact to consider is each diagonal can be characterized by the two vertices that are the endpoints of the segment. And so if you think about it in terms of the two vertices, that makes it um, easier to, to do. So the question is, how many diagonals does a nonagon have? Now, you may need to know what a nonagon is, um, and it may be worthwhile to learn the names of the different polygons, but a nonagon just has nine sides which means it also has nine vertices. So, if we think of each um, diagonal as just connecting two vertices, then it seems pretty logical to consider nine choose two. How many ways can I pick those two vertices um, to, uh, to get my um, diagonals? And so, in this case, nine choose two is nine times eight divided by two times one, which just is 36. However, a nonagon does not have 36 diagonals. You've got to think about what have I overcounted? Well, included in all these pairs of diagonals, uh, pairs of vertices that create diagonals, are the side lengths. I've, I've picked two vertices that are right next to each other, that means it's a side length. So this is the number of segments connecting all the vertices, but nine of them are side lengths, so I've got to actually subtract nine to get 27. And so the number of diagonals of a nonagon is 27. The formula would just be the number of sides in choose two. Count the total number of connections between the vertices and then just subtract away the number of sides. Very nice way to solve this problem. There are two other methods that you can consider. Um, the first method is thinking about um, starting with a square. A square just has one, two um, diagonals. And then you look at a pentagon. A pentagon has one, has one, two, three, four, five, and so it has five diagonals. And then we look at a hexagon. You get one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, and then this last one is nine. And so there are nine. And so you start seeing this sequence, which would be two, five, nine, and if you notice the difference here is three, four, and that sequence continues. If you want to know the number of um, diagonals in a heptagon or seven-sided, you just add five to get to 14, and then 6 to get to 20, and then 7 to get to 27, which was our nonagon. So there's a nice pattern that's created with the diagonals. The last one actually looks at, you know, takes you a close look at this and recognizes that from any vertice, the vertice itself and then the two right next to it are not included in the number of um, the vertices that you connect to make diagonals. And so if you think about it, each vertice times the number of um, vertices minus 3 to itself, and then the two are right next to it, that gets you the number of diagonals. However, you know, so that means that, for instance, from this diagonal right here, this vertice right here, there's 1, 2, 3. So it's this hexagon, and so there's six sides, and so six minus three, it connects up to it. And you do that for each vertice, but that double counts all of them, so it gets you another formula that uh, you have to divide by two. So n times n minus three divided by two, which for our problem was nine times nine minus three, which is six, divided by two, which is 54, divided by two, or 27. So three different ways to solve the problem. I think the combination way is the easiest, but these other two ways are nice as well. This is a nice formula if you like memorizing formulas.